Well, I greet you in the Holy Ghost. I'm Brother Dwayne, and welcome to another exciting episode of the Cry for America. We are brought to you by the Shekinah Family Worship Center, where Pastor Fields is our leader. We can be reached on the phone at area code 313-300-6457, or find us online under the Cry for America. We're on Facebook, YouTube, Rumble, and the Poppy Podcast. Please do us a favor and subscribe to our channel. Leave a like, a comment, a thumbs up. Share it across your platform and help us to let this word of God go forth as we are documenting God's servant, Apostle Quao. See us ministering here in Detroit, June 22nd of 2022, ministering on the overcoming power of divine love. Oh, what a sweet and wonderful message as we learn from Reese Howells. Let's go now to Apostle Quao. All right. Thank you, Jesus. the instrumental. This is instrumental. Okay. I'll send you the other versions up. Yeah, we, 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 we want the real meat, bro. <laughs> <laughs> we want to chew on some bones. <laughs> yes, God. some volume and then let's start over again. Well, let's start, let's start over. Let's start over. For me shall plead. I need no other argument. I need no other plea. It is enough that Jesus died and that he died for me. Enough for me that Jesus saves this ends my fear and doubt. A sinful soul. I come to him, he'll never cast me out. I need no other 
human, I need no other plea. It is enough that Jesus died and that he died for me. <laughs> My heart is lit. The Lord, he came to save for me his precious blood he shed. For me his life he gave. I need no other argument. I need no other plea. It is enough that Jesus died and that he died for me. I need the word of God. Salvation by my Savior's name. Salvation through his blood. I need no other argument. I need no other plea. There is enough that Jesus died and that he died for me. Amen. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. You may be seated. Hallelujah. But listen to it. Listen to what he says. My faith has found a resting place. Uh, if your your faith don't bring you to a place of rest, then you are still being tossed about by the waves of life. Because he says, those who have believed have done what? Have done what? Do we, we who have believed have done what? We have entered into his rest. We who have believed have entered into his rest. He didn't say we have entered into church. We have entered into his rest. There is an eternal rest which starts now on the earth. When we believe in Jesus Christ, we are brought into his being. Where we rest from our toils. Because life on earth has been a toil. Amen. Since the curse upon the earth was placed by God. That man will toil and live by the sweat of his brow. Amen. This curse is broken and lifted off of the soul of man. When we enter into Jesus Christ. Yes, when we enter into Christ we've come into rest. So brother, if your soul is still restless, then, then, then know that you are in the world now. The world is just tossing you about. In the kingdom, there is no restlessness. All right? In the kingdom into which we have been brought, there is no being tossed about by the waves of life. We have entered into the rest of God and we have ceased from our own toils. Okay, you see, people still are laboring. People still are struggling to make ends meet. They are tall and they have to do this and they have to do that and they have to do that. Restlessness in their soul, never having no rest. Amen. You go in the morning, you come in the midnight. Huh? You go in the morning for no, you know, to work and you come in the midnight. Right. Tired, restless. You sleep for about two, three hours. You get up again, you're gone. You have no rest. Still toiling to make ends meet. Yeah. What happened to Jesus Christ when he came into your soul? And what happened to Christ when he came into your soul? You drove him away. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you don't draw nigh to him. You don't, you don't have no time for him. How can you have rest? You continue your toil as you were doing before Jesus came. And unfortunately, that's what many believers' lives look like. Still toiling. The way they used to toil right before Christ came on in. Still no peace, still no love, still no joy, but consume with your job. Quiet and time, Sanya. What great madness is this? Christ has come into your being and you're still toiling. What happened to faith? 
faith that puts all your toils you know to rest ah and you turn everything to the hands of the master oh the master i like that word the master the master of the troubled seas <laughs> I love that name, the master of the troubled seas of life. Ah, he walks on them waves, said, peace be still. And them waves of toil, you know, they have to listen to him. But you don't allow him to speak to your waves. Your waves are just huge waves. And they are trying to sink your boat. But you don't call on Christ. And when you call, you don't believe. That he'll do it for you. Mm -hmm. So them ways are having their heyday in your life. Restless, tormented. Quite on time, Sanya. What, <laughs> what great madness is this? Brother Dwayne, I don't see brother, brother, brother Bob there. You, you sent him the thing. Uh, and that's yeah. Sister Diane too. Yeah. Okay. Can't make it tonight, but you're trying to come tomorrow. Okay, all right. Okay, so brethren, we'll see this. That your faith at one time after struggling, struggling, struggling has to come to a place of rest. Yes, Amen. Ha! Rest! Mm. Bro, you don't toil no more. Yeah. You are free now to help somebody. You see, when you are tormented and frustrated, what mind do you have to reach out a hand to somebody? You are consumed with self. Right. Consumed with you. Drowning in the sea of life. Why is the master? Oh, I love that name. I love, <laughs> I love that name. The master. <laughs> oh, when, when, when uh, Mary went, uh, what was it Mary? No, no, no. Martha went first and met Jesus uh, when Lazarus died. Okay, my Martha said, uh, okay, if, he, if you have me here, my, my brother will not have that. He said, but I'm here. So well, I know, I know we shall arise, you know, that the damn days off. So, so after he talked all you know, his theology and stuff, then he leave Jesus there. And then Jesus go, and now he, then he go and say, Mary, the master. <laughs> the master has come, and he's asking of you. How oh, I like that. <laughs> the master, the master of the seas. I like that image because he is. Amen. He walked on the troubles in the waves. Right, says, peace be still. They obeyed him. Yeah. Why can't he speak to your troubled waters? Mm. And your boat is being tossed up and down. And you don't have no rowing. Well, how do you call his name? No. Oh. Yeah, no, no rowing or oar no more. It's all falling in the waves. Now you're sitting in your, in, your, in, your, in your ship or in your boat, helpless. Come on, turn to the master. Turn to the master of the waves. The waves know him, they don't know you. <laughs> the waves, the troubled waves of life, they know the master of the troubled seas. They don't know you. Because you ain't got no word to, not to, not to tell them to quiet. But when the master speaks, all right, they listen. Ah, I have no argument, brother. I have no, I need no other argument. The master has spoken. No, no, the master is in. If the, the master is in your boat, what argument you got? He's in your boat. <laughs> Ooh, he will take you where you need to go. Instantly, you'll be there. Put your life in the hands of the master. I say, let the master take charge of your life. Yes. If not, you toil and toil and toil until you die and still go and toil in hell. <laughs> Ooh, yes, God. All right. Says, so my faith has found a resting place. A resting place. Not in device. Not in creed, not in theology, not in church services, no. uh, not in barbecue dinners. Uh, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> Ooh, not in religion. That's right. 
Not in anything that the human being can do by himself. He don't give you no resting. When you turn it loose to the master, there you get rest. So don't forget. Don't try to not rely on thy own. Thy own, he, he don't bring you into rest. Thy own, you know, you know how he's a tormentor. Thy own, he torments you. Your own, your own mind, your own understanding, your own plans, all these thy own stuff, they torment and frustrate you because they don't work. Amen. But turn it loose to the master. The master of the troubled ways. Ooh. Brother, just one word from the master. Everything is calm. Mm -hmm. The waves obey him. Amen. The raging waters obey him. Huh? The troubled life obey him. The, the insane inner people obey him. <laughs> ah, the master. I love it. So we, we sang it. Remember that. Okay, it says, enough for me that Jesus saves. Mm -hmm. This ends my fear and doubt. It ends it. Until your doubt is ended by what the master did for you, you ain't got no rest. There's no fear, there's no doubt in this walk. There's confidence. There's trust, there is faith, there is leaning on the everlasting arms. Leaning on. <laughs> oh, brother, I love Jesus, you know. I love, I feel good in my soul. I lean on the everlasting arms. Yeah, he ain't gonna let me fall down, brother. He promised that he would sustain me. So I can trust him. You must trust Jesus. Because that is the very essence of the Christian work. Mm -hmm. Trust Jesus. Amen. Trust the plan. <laughs> yes. The plan of life is called Jesus. Amen. The plan of life is called Jesus. Amen. That's God's plan. That's right. Trust the plan. They call him Jesus. Hallelujah. He will take you through. Right. He will take you through. He ain't taking you through uh, so far. He brought you this far. Mm -hmm. He's going to continue. Ah, uh, he said, uh, enough for me that Jesus saves. This ends my fear and doubt. A sinful soul, I come to him. He will never cast me out. He ain't casting, he holds you. He holds on to you. He don't let you drift. Oh, my Lord, my Lord, I thank you. My heart is leaning on the word, the word. <laughs> The written word of God. Ah, salvation by my Savior's name. Salvation through his blood. Mm -hmm. I need no argument. No other creed. No nothing. Mm -hmm. Because my faith is not standing on some theology. Mm -hmm. on, some, on some creed. Yeah. Uh, on some man-made religion. Mm -hmm. Oh no. My faith is resting on the divine, the divine religion that Jesus brought. Amen. The confidence of faith, yeah. leaning on the everlasting arm, <laughs> and knowing that he has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. You all don't believe that. But it's true. He don't leave, he don't forsake. Uh, how many times has the Lord you know, you know, reminded us, remember what I told you, I will never leave you, nor forsake. Oh, brother, it goes my soul to hear the Son of God telling you directly that I told you, my promise that I will never leave you, nor forsake you. So don't, don't look around as if I'm not there. When you don't hear me, don't worry, I'm right there still. I'm right with you when you don't hear me. Right. I'm just watching. Ooh, I like that, brother. He's just watching to see that you're going to walk according to the way he taught you. Just watching. Ah, the master. The master teaches how to walk. You hear that? The master teaches us 
how to walk with him. He will teach you and then he will train you and then he will test you and see whether you learned good. I tell you, Jesus, he's a master. He's no teacher like Jesus. I tell you, no teacher like Jesus. He can teach those who didn't go to school. You don't know ABC, but Christ can teach them by the Holy Ghost. By the Holy Ghost. Oh, my Lord, my God. Thank you, Jesus. Ah, Jesus, I love you. I love you. I love you. I love you. You are so worthy. You are so worthy, oh, my Lord. And my Savior, I bow. I bow because you gave me faith. Amen. You gave me the living word of God. You gave me uh, salvation in the blood. The blood of Jesus. I can count. I can count on the blood. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. I ain't going to falter. I know he will sustain me. I know he will sustain me. Christ don't leave his children. You see, it is the children that leave Christ. Amen. It is you who leave him. Amen. He don't leave nobody. That's right. Amen. I tell you, he never leaves. But when you tell him, I'm tired of you, I don't want no more, I don't want to obey no more, I'll say, all right, then go. Mm -hmm. That's right. But for him, he don't leave nobody. Amen. So he will make sure that you make it to heaven if you trust him. Amen. I say, Amen. he's the one that takes people to heaven. Amen. So trust in him. <laughs> he made heaven for the people of God. So put your total trust in him who alone can take you to heaven. Nobody, your pastor don't know heaven's way. Your apostles don't know heaven's way. Jesus Christ made the way to heaven because he is the way. He can take you there. He can take you there. He can take you to, to heaven. So believe him. All right? Tonight we're going to continue our word. We're going to continue our word from his house. Ah, brother. We remember the song that we have sang, okay? My faith has found a resting place. Ah, yes, God. Woo, Jesus, the son of the living God. Yeah. All right, let's go back to chapter, chapter 7, uh, chapter 8. Yes, chapter 8. We're going back to chapter 8. Because we continue from there. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Yeah. Ah, thank you, Jesus. Ah, Lord, Master, I thank you. Oh, yes, God. We came to this place here. All right. Okay. Says here, we came to the place where after he has conquered that, that uh, going on only, only uh, two meals a day, right? And uh, after he, he conquered it in about a, you know, uh, two weeks or so, he conquered it. Then he, he committed to it for two years. For two years, see, you're going to learn from the Lord or from, and from his house when he produces something in you. When you obey him on assignment that he gave you, all right, he makes sure that you don't just obey it during the time that he assigned you, but and forever you obey that attitude, you inculcate that attitude into your spirit. It becomes part of your walk. Whatever you learned during the assignment time when you were uh, praying for the soul to be brought before God and to be delivered, he told you fast for six weeks. All right? All right, so during six weeks, you were, you were crying to God. You were bringing the, you know, the soul before God for six weeks. You were fasting. You were carrying on, carrying on. And then he would tell you it's over. See, he said, okay, the fast is now all right. Now you can expect me to move. But then, Rich House will not stop. 
He just keep on going because he's used to it. That's the whole secret. He's used to it. It's a new lifestyle. So he loves to maintain that position. You read and recite that I want to maintain my, my, my place of abiding. Maintain what I learned. What I learned brought me to a certain grade in the spirit. I, want, I don't want to lose it. So he maintains it. He keeps on going. And then the Lord will give him another assignment. And what he learned during the last assignment, okay, it is increased. You see that? So that's how he built. The, the Spirit of God rises in his being. Right, the, 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 the level of the Holy Ghost River you know, rises from the ankle, okay, to the knee, to the waist, to the neck, and now he has to swim. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh, that's Ezekiel's vision on Ezekiel 47. That's the river. See, that's how we are supposed to walk. Walk, okay, we, we drink Holy Ghost, okay, it comes to the ankle. The ankle in a level. All right. Drink some more. You come to the knee level. Okay. Drink some more. You come to the waist. Drink some more. You come to the neck. <laughs> Drink some more. Hey, hold on, hold on. No, it's not. I can't, I can't walk no more. I have to swim. Oh, yes, God. All right. So let's see this. It says here. Ah, let me go back to the, to the paragraph. You know where we are, right? Yeah. You come to the page. Huh? 50, oh, that is 57 in your book. No, you have the same book as mine, 58. You have the same book of, as mine, so 58. Okay, look look in the middle. He had one meal. Okay, he had... Well, no, let's go, but did we do this? Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, we haven't... Okay, it will be, it will be 57. Let me see. Yeah, yeah, let's go back. Let's go back because I've jumped the page. Let's go back. I've joined the page. Okay. All right. All right. I've, okay. Now, he, okay, okay, okay. I see where we came to. All right. In the middle, he said, uh, the closer a person is to God, okay, the, that's page 56, the closer a person is to God, the more terrible is the least sin, sin to be. You remember when he disobeyed? Okay, and then the, and the Lord told him to pray, lifting up his hands for three hours. Amen. All right. So he says, it's horrible if you, you are very close to God and you sin. It's serious. Okay, God will not let you, you know, go without any punishment. So he said here, he didn't take dinner for many days after that, but spent the hour with God. As he said later, the moment I got victory in it, it wasn't a very big thing to do. It was merely a stepping stone to his next call to me. It is while you still want a thing that you can't get your mind off of it. When you have risen above it, he may give it back to you, but then you are out of its grip. When you conquer that assignment, Okay, that, that weakness in your life no longer controls you. Okay, you've overcome that. You're going to see some interesting things. You know, in the book of Revelation, okay, the message to the seven churches, all right? And each one of that, uh, who, uh, uh, he that overcometh, he that overcometh, he that overcometh, he that overcometh. All right, shall have certain things. So the, the Christian life is an overcoming walk. Yes. Amen. It's an, a walk designed for you to overcome the obstacles the Lord allows in your way. Yes, or the assignment he gives to you may not be easy. Amen. But the promise is he that will overcome. Yes. So in what God assigned to his house, He's, he's just leading him to overcome one obstacle after another, which allows the Holy Ghost to transform his character. Are you hearing? If you don't obey, you don't grow. I say, if you don't obey, whilst you are called to abide in Christ, abide in his obedience. Obedience to what God tells you when you abide in. 
You see that? So if you don't obey, the Holy Ghost cannot transform you. And the Holy Spirit must work in you as you are abiding to transform you and enable you to overcome that weakness inside you. Okay, so understand that. Who, uh, who sort of us shall overcome? He who overcomes. He who overcomes. If you need, if you read God calling, there's, there's a chapter I said, study the overcometh. The overcometh I gave to my servant John. Yes, God. Study them and see what is promised to those who overcome. So in this Christian walk, it's an overcoming in a, in a walk. A walk that will encounter obstacles. A walk that you come face to face with mountains. But no mountain should, you know, should discourage you. No mountain should defeat you. Why? Because you are walking with a conqueror. Oh, look at the huge mountain that was given to him, assigned him to go and conquer with the, with the village that, that, had, that they don't have no Christian stuff there. Everybody's a drunkard, so to speak. But you know what his confidence was? That the Holy Ghost was going there with him. So he don't care how, how many people are drunk or they don't know no go, it don't matter. The Holy Ghost is going there. The conqueror is going there with him. Yes. Did, the, did many people not come to the Lord? Amen. Did he not reach so many in the village? Yes. Why? The conqueror lives inside him. He enables him to accomplish every assignment God gave him to do. Yes. When he told him, Anybody who has a need or has a claim on you, whoa, how am I going to do that? Everybody can come to me and say, hey, guy, I, I live here in this village. I, I, I ain't God this. God said I can have a claim on you. And you don't complain. You just look to God and let him produce. Ah, Jesus. Ah, Jesus. What a life, brother. What a life of usefulness. You become, you become a co-laborer with Christ. He has, the, he has the resources and he gives them to you to give to the people. You are a vessel of honor. He has to pour, he has to pour his riches to the people through you. That's what, you know, abiding and then intercessory, intercessory prayer is all about. You become the, the channel through whom the resources of God you know, pass to the people. Yes, amen. Uh, let's, let's see. You say here. Uh, once he's, he, he's overcome it, that's no problem. Not long. Now we're going to continue. Not long after this, after he got the victory mm -hmm. about, about not eating you know, a dinner or something like that. Okay, all right. Not long after that, and only a few months, a few months after he had started the ministry in the village, the Lord gave him a further commission, a further assignment, for which these lessons were an obvious preparation. The, the father, he, he, he has to, you know, you know give up you know, lunch. It was a preparation for this assignment. He didn't know. He didn't know the law will let you do something. All right, you, you say, now, why am I doing that? Why am I doing that? Yeah. Down the line, say, oh, as he prepares you for what is coming. Yes. The Lord prepares you for what is coming. Amen. As you are walking with God, any assignment God gives to you, please obey and do it. Because it is in preparation for other assignments. If you are obedient, when you meet the next assignment, you apply what you learned and just overcome that too. So you'll be going from overcoming to overcoming to overcoming unless you are a rebel, unless you, you fail to obey. So now he says here, the Lord gave him a further uh, commission for which these lessons were an obvious preparation. He laid on him. Uh, listen to the next assignment to him. 
This one, he tells him, uh, the first one, hey, don't eat no meal, no lunch meal, okay? Don't eat that. Don't eat no lunch meal. Ah, I need my lunch. I have four meals now. Ah, wow. All right, he obeys. And then was, all right, now you pass my test, another assignment. You pass my test, another assignment. You don't pass it, no, no assignment. Amen. You don't pass the, the previous assignment, you can go on. Now, do you remember, you remember this? In uh, Prophet uh, Antichrist, you know, one of the revelation God gave him, how many people were walking in the pathway, but they were stuck in the pathway to heaven. They were stuck and they cannot go because certain things they have not taken care of. You hear me now? Maybe they were stubborn. Maybe they were, they, they were disobedient. And once you are stubborn and disobedient, you stay at the place you know you disobeyed. Until you have learned to obey God before you are allowed to continue. Ah, you didn't hear me. I, I say you didn't hear good. Amen. Where is, uh, where is the Amina guy? I thought he was on. Then where is he going again? <laughs> oh, yes, God. But listen to this. Uh, he said, he laid on him, listen, he laid on him the burden of the tramps. The many men who were to be found in the street. Whoa, found in the district, wandering homeless and jobless from place to place. He put their burden on him. And, and hold on. They were to give a chance to every tramp that came to the mission. Give him a chance. What chance? Find, he said here, 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 here to the mission. It was to be a practical lesson on what divine love is towards an undeserving undese sinner. They are now to demonstrate. Okay, what divine love does for an undeserving sinner? The tramps, they are downtrodden. Okay, they, nah, they, don't, they don't care for themselves. They're just roaming around. But divine love can lift them up. I say divine, I use Baka. Divine love is the only power that can lift up such men, such people. Who are falling down in society, trodden down by society, left and abandoned. The love of God alone. Not church going. Not church singing. The reality of the power of the love of God in the being. That alone can undergo the stresses, the stresses. And problems and the agony you are going to have to face to lift them up. I said the love of God alone. <sighs> you, you guys, you all you you don't get happy at all. I mean, I mean. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> the love of God alone can lift up any human being or downtrodden. Left abandoned by society. You, you hear me now? You hear, you hear what we talk about, Pastor? Earlier? Mm. Or abandoned by the Father. You see that? Ah, yagazi gaza gaza gaza. Yagaza gaza gaza gaza. Azu mangazai. The young man needs somebody. Alright? To lift him up. Lift him up before God. God can link, link your prayer to him. Azu. <laughs> boy oh boy why don't we pray more why don't we lift up people and pray for the multitude god will direct our prayers and link them up with you not to those we are praying for god alone can do that so here the burden is now for the tramps now he went to the villages right and helped the villages lift them up now it is the it is the tramp, <laughs> the tramps that roam around in the in the in the district. 
the, the men who were to be found in, the, in that district wandering homeless and jobless from place to place. Do we have some in America? Do we have some in Africa too? Roaming around, no help, no clothes. But we go to church. We sing in the choir. We have a good time in our church services. But the Trump, he ain't got no, no, no access. He ain't got no hope. We teach Sunday school. It's about time that we make our Christianity, okay, impactful. Have impact on people who have no hope. It says here, listen to what he said. <laughs> they, they were to give a chance to every Trump that came to the mission. It was to be a practical lesson of what divine love is towards an undeserving sinner. Notice what God is looking for. A practical experience, Azul. A practical learning of what divine love means and can do for an undeserving sinner. A demonstration of divine love in action. How does it work? You say you got God's love? All right. Put it to work. Let me see. Did Jesus not demonstrate divine love? But you look at the woman who lost her only child, the, 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 what, the, the, the widow at Nain. Then that when they were carrying some some dead dead guy along going there, he's the only son of the mother. All right? Jesus was filled with compassion. Ah, his heart felt the agony of the woman whose only child is gone. Who can help her? Who will take care of that woman? The only son is gone. Jesus felt the anguish of the woman. Then he just went there. No, no, he there ain't no protocol. He just went there. He said, he touched the beer. He touched the beer. He said, hold on, hold on. Guys, don't hold on. Son, come up. The guy woke up. The, guy, <laughs> the dead man woke up. They were going to bury him. The widow had her son back. Because of the mercy. Because of the love and kindness. Because of the heart of love. Jesus felt her pain. Jesus felt her agony. Now, how won't you feel agony? Why is it that your love don't feel no agony of people's pains? Why is it that your love don't feel agony for people not dying around you? Into ah, zee, 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 zee. My God, my God, have mercy upon us. For we don't know you. We don't know you. We just go to church. Ah, Lord, we have to press on until we find him, yeah. until we know him, until we feel the heart of Jesus. Who? Oh, that heart of Jesus is an amazing heart, compassionate heart. Brother, I don't know if you feel him. Whoa! <laughs> Oh, the little, I, you know, that touches my heart, brother, I feel it. The heart of God is a heavy heart. Heavy with mercy. Heavy with the agony that he feels for people who are abandoned. Who have no hope. Oh, Jesus. The church has failed him. But they ain't going to fail no more. Because the days are coming. And Christ is going to revive, going to cleanse his house. And he will have a people that will have his heart. A people that also, a people that will feel the heart of Jesus beating in them. Zamu, that was Paul, that was Peter, that was John, that was, that was, that is Andrew, that is all Bartholomew, all them guys. They felt the beating heart of Christ in their bosom. Do you feel it? Do you feel his heart in your bosom? Or you feel the world in your bosom? 
Ah, brother, brother Bob, God bless you. Yeah, 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 Bob made it. Thank you, Jesus. But listen to this. It says here, it was to be a practical lesson. Who will learn it? Results. <clears throat> He's going to learn this. And the group, they're going to learn the practical lesson of what divine love is all about. Towards an undeserving sinner. Who? Can you learn it? You got to learn it. Because we, are, we have the same job to do. Why do we only have to reach out to those who look good? But they don't know God, but they look good. So we go there in the Holy Ghost and the Holy Ghost. You know Jesus. How about the, the poor man in the street? How about the homeless man? He don't need no God. Uh, he don't need no God, so why do we avoid the homeless man? <laughs> How do we leave out all those who are bound, oppressed? The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. For the Lord has anointed me to preach good news to the PhD holders, to the BBBZY, to the engineers. <laughs> the engineers, yes, God, and the prime ministers. Woo! Jesus came to look for the prime ministers. And the engineers and the, and the millionaires. Right. Oh yeah, the one who can pay a thousand in his line. <laughs> Is that what he came for? No. For he has sent me to preach the good news to the poor. Ah, to set free those who are oppressed. Hey, to set free the prisoners. Those who are crushed. Ah, uh, the bruised ones, the helpless ones, the torment, the bound. The gospel is good news. Okay, if you are self-satisfied, you don't see no good news in the gospel. But be one of the poor. Be one of the, of the wounded and the oppressed. And let the good news come to you and start to lift you up. Brother, it is good news. You feel, Wow. I was a sinner far from the shore, the shoreline. I was sinking and Jesus came by. Now love lifted me. Love. Oh, Zakuriando, Mama. Kazabura, Uncle Dabadaga. Sengarumdaga Zute. The love of God lifted me up. Love lifted me up. Listen. Yes, yeah, so what, 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 what is entailed in the divine love that they are going to show? What do we have here? It says here, the Spirit made plain what they were to do to show, to show this divine love towards an undeserving sinner. What are you going to do? He said, first, to give each man a new suit of clothes. Whoa! The Trump man going to wear some suit. <laughs> you think you are the only one who can wear some suit? You think you are the only one who can wear a suit? <laughs> oh, ah, you think you are the only one who, uh, who can wear a suit? The Trump man has to wear a suit. God said Trump man. He has to wear a suit too. <laughs> who, who can do that by Jesus' love? That's the love of God. Ah! It says here, to give each man a new suit of clothes. Find him lodgings, a place to stay, an apartment of their own. And then find them work. Give him work. Give him a place to stay and give him clothes to wear. And pay his board, Woo! his food. Okay, pay his board. Until he drew his first pay. Azu. Until the Trump had his first pay. <laughs> Until the Trump roaming around in the street. He uh, ain't got no job. Now you're going to give him a job. Find him a job. Train him to do the job. And then pay for everything. Until he gets his first paycheck. <laughs> Brother, what kind of Christianity is like this, brother? That's your Christianity, your church, promote this kind of stuff. 
That's your, your pastor demonstrate this. Your preacher. Brother, this kind of Christianity will win anywhere it goes. Anywhere it goes, it will win. Ah, anywhere it goes, because brother, it bring in some grace and mercy. And bring in what the human being needs, spirit, soul, and body. You think Jesus fed the multitude? Oh, yeah. What was he doing? Trying to demonstrate something to you. Demonstrate, uh, hey, brother, I can take care of the multitude. I can take care of them. I can feed them. Just offer me your body as my, as my servant. Offer me your bodies so I can live in you and do my work. This is the work of God. Not the work of man. Ah, <laughs> homeless man, he, he got suit. Wow. Find him lodgings and work and pay his board until he drew his first pay. We were called to put Isaiah 58 into practice. Woo! Woo! <laughs> ah, we were called to live Isaiah 58. You hear me? Did you ever even, even, even read, read, read that 58 chapter? You don't read it because you are scared. They will ask you to, you know, to do some stuff. <laughs> but the results that we were made to put into practice, right. Isaiah 58, go read it. You say here, we were called to put Isaiah 58 into practice. Say, Mr. House, deal thy bread to the hungry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah, bring the poor. That are cast out to thy house. And when thou seest the naked, cover him. In our first love, we had blamed everyone. Listen to this. Listen to this. In our first love, we had blamed everyone who did not believe that the Bible was literally true. We blamed, hey, brother, Bible is true. Oh, yeah, Bible. Oh, you believe Bible is true? Yeah, I believe. Bible, I believe is true. I believe that Bible is true. But why don't you live it? The Spirit, the Spirit of God, now compelled us to put our own belief into practice. Live what you, what you, what you say, what you declare. Say so the Bible is true, then live it. Live it in your life. Show me that the Bible is true in your life. Woo. I didn't say show me what church you go to. I said show me that the Bible works in your life. <laughs> Amina. Ain't nobody say Amina. Amina. <laughs> Ooh, brother. I tell you, Jesus means business. Yeah. We failed him, but he never failed us. Yeah. Christ has been failed by his church. Because they never allowed the Holy Ghost to raise them up. Okay, they came to church, paid their tithes, sang some song, and that's it. You call that Christianity? Going to church Sunday, you call that Christianity? Where is the fruit of Christianity? What is it that testifies that Jesus lives inside you? Where is the Holy Ghost demonstration power in your life? Making you a practical man who reaches out with the power of God to help people. Amen. Amen. It says here, the Holy Ghost now compelled us to put our own belief into practice. The Sermon on the Mount. Hey! The Constitution of the, of the Kingdom. The Constitution of the Kingdom is the Sermon on the Mount. Matthew 5, 6, 7. is the Constitution of the Kingdom of God. Uh, you must know your constitution. <laughs> you must live this and practice it. The Sermon on the Mount stated the laws of the kingdom. And we were to act on them to the hilt. Woo! Don't leave one, one ounce of word that you ain't obeyed there. Live it out. Brother, will that not bring a kind of Christian people who are awesome. Mm. 
Will that not produce some awesome people on the face of the earth whose Christianity is not in their mouth, but it's in their conduct, their lifestyle? Ah, Jesus. Ooh, brother. I tell you, I tell you why it ain't happening. Too much barbecue in the house of God. Barbecue dinners. We live in America. Barbecue dinners. Everything is good. We eat, 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 but to fast. Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hey, didn't Jesus I didn't say we should fast. <laughs> Jesus I didn't tell you to fast. Jesus I didn't tell you to fast. Oh, no, he didn't tell me to fast. So who, who must fast? Oh, there is the pastor. Pastor and the, and the apostles, they fast. <laughs> Ooh, lying devil. <laughs> he said, the laws of the kingdom, and we were to act on them to the hilt. If any man take away thy coat, let him have thy cloak also. Give to him that asketh thee, love your enemies. These are all in the, in the somewhere on the mount. He said, I soon found out also, listen to that, I soon found out that the aim of the spirit in this was to bring me to that grade in life where I would love the unlovely ones yes, amen. by asking us to obey and do these things to serve the tramps. He was going to bring me to a grade of life in his own personal walk where the love of God is real to him. Amen. Where he lives in the love of God, not just in, in words spoken, but in reality. Yeah. I soon found out also that the aim of the spirit in this was to bring me to that grade in life where I would love the unlovely ones. My self nature, thy own, the guy they call thy own, the old man, my self nature and natural love had to be changed for the divine nature and love. Ah. Did you hear that? My self nature, myself, self, self, me, 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 me. Me, me don't love nobody but me. Me, me, he don't love nobody, just me, me, me. Mm -hmm. Me and my friend and my dog and my cat. That's it. And ask for and no more. <laughs> me, me, me ain't, gonna, ain't, 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 ain't got no time beyond himself. Because it is the, is the selfishness of the fallen nature that prevents us from walking with Jesus Christ intimately. Amen. The self, the self, the old man. We don't, we, we don't want him to die. He's yeah, supposed to be crucified. I have been crucified with Christ. And, and, and nonetheless I live. Oh, no, no, no. Nonetheless I don't want to live. <laughs> nonetheless I live. All right? And the life that I live, I live it by the faith of the Son of God. All right? Who loved me and gave himself for me. That's how I live. Not me. Christ, Christ living in me empowers me to surrender my life to him and to do these things that he alone will enable you to do. Christ Jesus is who we are dealing with. We are not dealing with the African God, African religion, or Indian religion, or whatever religion you're talking about. Oh no, we're dealing with the living Christ. The living Christ who alone has power to transform your inner life. Amen. Conform you to his own image. And make you a son of God. Ooh, yes, God. So my self nature and natural love had to be changed for the divine nature. And love before I could love a tramp as my own brother. Oh, oh. I'm to, I'm to love a tramp as my, a tramp as my own brother. I should associate with him. But Jesus associated with them. So why don't I associate with them? Oh no. 
No, I don't like that. I don't like to hang out with some Trump. No, no, I don't want, I, I don't want them, them Trump guys. But brother, that, this is Christianity. Amen. The forsaken, the downtrodden. Brother, you reach out to them by the grace of God in your life. Yes, Lord. Only the Lord can, can, can enable you to do that because he will change your nature. And he has power to change your natural nature, your natural tendency to be self-centered. He breaks that and makes you selfless as himself. Yes, and makes you loving and kind as himself. Mm -hmm. Ah, yes, God. So he said here, before I could love a Trump as my own brother, helping the people of the village was easy compared with helping the Trumps. <laughs> For they were people who usually will not help themselves. And often did not appreciate the help of others. But I was to Isaiah, I was to act towards each exactly as I would if he were my own brother. <laughs> notice what notice what this assignment is doing with him. He's going to he's going to identify with them. He's going to walk with them, so close to them. Live like the way they live too. <laughs> He's going to come down to their level. He's going to come down to their... Now, we talk about intercessor. You who, who want to be... In, I'm not talking about prayer warriors. I'm talking about intercessors. Okay? You are going to understand that you must identify with the person you are interceding for. Did Christ not bear our sin? Did Christ not bear our burden? Did Christ not bear our sicknesses and, and infirmities? Did he, did he not intercede on our behalf until he became one of us? <laughs> until he became even worse than us. He became the very thing God, God hated. He became sin. He didn't just you know, you know, take, you know, what, replace us. He became the very thing God hated, called sin. Right. Before we could be delivered, mm -hmm. Amen. Christ became sin. So that we might become the righteousness of God in him. Yes, God. Yes. An intercessor is an am amazing, amazing, amazing position. To be allowed to occupy because you are next to the heart, the heart of God. Because through you, God carries out a lot of things. Through you, God pours his heart, his mercy, his grace in abundance to the, to the undeserving, Amen. to the distressed, to the oppressed. Through you, through the intercessor, whose heart is filled with love. Love for God and love for the human people. <coughs> That's an intercessor. Amen. And he don't give up once God gives him the assignment. He ain't come up. What did he say? And, uh, and uh, my word, so the, the, the word that comes from my mouth will not, do, do I, will not come back to me void. Amen. When the intercessor gets the word of God, the assignment of God, he ain't going back to God until it is accomplished. He says here, ah, ah. He said, but I was to act towards each exactly as I would if he were my own brother. Treat him, treat him as your brother. Treat him and act towards him as your brother. The very day of this new commission, this new assignment, they saw a Trump in their meeting. <laughs> A Trump came by. Who brought him? The Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost brought, brought a Trump there. He gave him a sermon. Now he's going to test it. <laughs> you, find, you find the Holy Ghost doing these things. He gives you a assignment. He will test it. He ain't going to just let you do some, some, uh, some uh, how do you call it, uh, uh, theory and without no practicals. 
<laughs> he will take you through it. Okay. So he says here, the very day of this new commission, they saw a Trump in their meeting for the first time. He had been on the road for months without work or lodgings and had heard the singing in the mission. He was overcome with the reception he was given. One of the believers provided him with lodgings and found him a work. Right there, the Trump came. They obeyed, gave him a place to stay, and gave him a job to do. Ain't that something? <laughs> Brother, I want to obey God, obey him God. <laughs> obey, obey him God, all right? <laughs> well, yes, God. Provided him with lodgings and find him work. In two days, another came. News of charity is like wireless. <laughs> Mr. Howe said, carried far and wide in no time. And a greater number came than we had bargained for. The Holy Ghost will test the assignment. No limit to what he will bring. Because he's the one going to supply it anyway. See, that's the whole point that we miss. God gives us assignment. We think we have to do it. It's not us going to do it. He, gonna, he lives inside us. He's the one who deploys his mighty grace and power through you and enable you to accomplish it. No man does the work of God. It is God who does his own work through the vessel that he chooses. God does whatever assignment he gives you. He does it through you. Ah, in two days, another came, or I like that. He says here, and a greater number came than we bargained for. We were not allowed to stop them. Ah, how dare you stop the tramps? That God said, go there, go there for help. Go there, they will help you. The Lord directs them. He gave you assignment. He makes sure you get, you get the people that he wants you to help. The people look for ministry to do. We don't look for ministry. The law gives ministry. The law directs ministry. The law will send you the PC. You don't understand. When you walk with the Lord, when you seek the Lord, and you surrender to him, you don't have to look for ministry. He will send you people you need to help. He will send you straight. But, but you see, y'all don't read God calling. Y'all don't read it. Me, I keep on telling you, y'all don't <laughs> He says, I will, he said, make sure that when you walk with me, you understand that I will send you strange visitors. Make sure you love them. Make sure you don't send them away unhelped. I, I, I would have put that thought in their heart to come to you. So whoever I sent to you, welcome them with, your, with both of your hearts. He was telling the ladies. Yeah. Welcome them with both of your hearts. Receive him and take good care of him. I might have put the thought in, 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 well, in their heart to come here for help. So brother, if you are a servant of God, you are not a servant just in church. Yeah. It's not in church that he made you a servant. It is in life. He made you a servant who walks with him daily, not just in church. I say, God makes you a servant who follows him, walks with him daily. Amen. Not just in church, daily. You walk with the Lord. Then he can give you the assignment he wants any time, any hour. Amen. Ah, Listen to what he says here. Ooh. All right, it says, uh, we were not allowed to stop them. If they came of their own accord, we did not dare to turn them away. I didn't call them, uh, what, uh, tramps. I preferred the name the Savior used and called them prodigals. <laughs> and I learned, according to uh, 1 John chapter 4, verse 20, 
that you don't love the Savior one bit more than you love the least of the, the least he died for. Say, so how can you say I love God whom whom, whom you don't see? Amen. Huh? When you don't love your brother whom you see. Amen. Come on, come. So if you love if you do, if you say you love God whom whom you don't see, but you cannot love your brother whom you see, you know you are a liar. That's right. Okay. So if you love Jesus, love the brethren. Amen. If you love Jesus, you love all those that Jesus is concerned about. Right. And if you are a man of God, all the sheep, oh my goodness. Pastor, are you a pastor? I don't know. I don't know. But when God gives you a sheep that he's rescuing, and brings him to you under your care. Woe be unto you if you let that sheep go back into the world and perish again. Because he paid price for that sheep. All right? Uh, he said, the last time the song that we, we sang, it wasn't the, 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 what, the tune that should have brought that. This, uh, I, what, he said, a charge to keep I have. A God to glorify, a never dying soul to save, and fit, ah, and fit, <laughs> ah, to show the, save the soul, and make him fit for the sky, for heaven. Save the soul, and bring him home to me. That's the charge of God to the church. To, to, to pastors, you all jump on the money, on the money, on the money. And you let the soul God died for, bled for, to go back into the world. And you, the pastor, want to go to heaven? You ain't going there. <laughs> oh, you ain't going there. A charge to keep I have. A God to glorify. A never dying soul to save and fit him for the sky. Fit him not for hell. Woe unto you Pharisees. Woe unto you scribe. For you come through the whole earth looking for converts. Right? To bring to your church. And when you win one and you bring him to your church, you make him twice a child of hell. More than yourself. You know what Jesus says? You Pharisees, your ministry, your ministry produces people for hell. Ain't that something? That's what Jesus told the Pharisees. Your ministry produces souls or Christians for hell. They don't go to heaven. What you produce, they don't make it. And it is happening in many churches. How many, listen. The Lord, the, the Lord told us something. He like, said, what, what, uh, this song, what's the song that the Lord uh, used to what, uh, uh, teach us? Uh, what? Now the laborer's task is over. Now the battle day is, is what? It's, it's, it's gone? Yeah. It's won, okay. Now upon the Father's shore land the voyager at last. Father, in thy gracious keeping, leave we now thy servant sleeping. What a song. And then the Lord said, he said, we, we signed this thing with the Lord and he gave us the message. He said, listen, you all, you all don't know the lives of the people. You are pastors. You are supposed to serve me. And the people that I gave you to, you know, to raise up, okay, you didn't do it. And when they die, they bring his, his body to the church, the casket. And brother, you, you come and sing this song, Father, uh, in thy gracious keeping, we, we now leave your servant all right, sleeping. Now, now we leave him in your hands. But did he know me? That's what the Lord said. Do you know whether he knew me? So why are you leaving him? My <laughs> why are you leaving him my, in my hands? He don't come to me. 
He goes to hell and you're producing people that don't come to me and you come and put them in your churches. He said, Father, in thy gracious keeping, we now leave your servant. We now leave your servant not sleeping. He's sleeping for me. He don't sleep in my bosom. And that is what is happening in many churches. Amina! I ain't hearing no Amina. <laughs> well, who said my Lord Amina? <laughs> yeah, yeah, you said good. The, the, <laughs> Amina, my Lord. Yeah, that's why it is. Now listen to this. Says here, you don't love the Savior one bit more than you love the least one he died for. In all this, in all this, the Spirit was leading his servant more and more, listen to this now, into the secret of intercession. All the assignments have been given. You see, it says, it says what? Intercession? But then look at what Rich House went through. Look at the assignment given to him and what he had to do. Look at the, the food he had to let go. Look at you know, the, the fact that he had to walk close to them. Okay, now listen to this. He says here, the secret of intercession, that is the identification of the intercessor with the ones for whom he prays. You pray for somebody. You have to identify with him. You have to sit where they sit. You have to feel what they feel. That's why his house will be told to eat the same meal as the, as the trams eat. Because he has, he's taking on their burdens. He has to be like them, like Jesus Christ was like us. He came and sat there and took our pain. Are you hearing me? This is intercession. You take the very burden upon your shoulder and you carry the person along with you. He says here, the, inter, uh, the identification of the intercessor with the ones for whom he prays. Now listen to what, what Rich House has been doing so far. He had called him, the Lord had called him, all right, to associate with Will Battery. You remember Will Battery? Okay, but listen to what happened. I don't know whether, whether you really re remember what happened to uh, Rich House and, uh, and Will Battery. Okay, in chapter 6. Will Battery, which had touched his pride. His pride when Rich House was associating with Will Battery. That, 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 that Trump, Trump like guy. Okay, that shoes were just disheveled and all that. Rishaos was walking with him. At one time, he felt ashamed. What is that? His pride. God touched his pride. Hey, you don't want to associate with him, but I do. I, the Lord, I do. I do. So why, why do, are you better than I, the Lord? And you let your pride, stinking pride, and, and you are ashamed to walk with my son that I created him? Your stinking pride don't make your associate draw closer. Let me read that to you because maybe you all you're, you're read the Bible, but you read results, but you all don't, don't, don't remember. Let me read that to you. All right, let me show you quick. Ah, yes, God. All right. Ah, yes, God. Loving an outcast. All right, let me show you. Okay, all right. It says here on page uh, page of, uh, 42 of my Rich House, chapter 6. All right, let, let me read it. It says, in the uh, about 10 days, no, here. In, in, in his free hours, Rich House made this man, Will Battery, his friend, and spent all his Sundays with him. He had more joy spending his Sundays with, with, with him, associating with him. He had more joy, he said, seeking to win this one than at chapel in the company of the other believers. He would rather spend his Sunday you know, you know, days with this guy, with, with, with Will Battery, than going to church you know, with all them so-called believers. 
He said, he said here, he even walked about the village with him. Although, although, although embarrassed once or twice as people turned and stared at him. What is that? Pride. And God knew that, so he touched it. He touched his pride. It got to him. He says here, but the Lord pulled me up on it. You hear that? The Lord pulled me up. So we see what he had to face with, 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 with battery seeking to, you know, to, to win him for Jesus. All right, then look at the next one. Okay, he says here. He, he, well, okay, he had called him to associate with Will Battery, which has touched his pride. He had made him responsible for the debts of Jim Stakes, was he not? Yeah. He took the debts of uh, what well, Jim Stakes had to pay two years' rent for him. All right? Okay? Which had made him responsible all right, for the debts of Jim Stakes, which had touched his pocket. Hello? It got to him. He spent money on him, on a tramp, which attached his pocket. Now he called him on this assignment, or get to the tramps. Now he called him to share in the physical sufferings. Phys Ayo! He called him now with the tramps to share in the physical sufferings of the destitute which would touch his body. Listen, he was to learn a little how to feel as they felt and sit where they sat. Trams did not have the plentiful, the plentiful food that other people have. And God called him. God called his house to come down to their level. Brother, don't tell me you are an, an intercessor if you ain't going to identify. That's why, that's why I knew I had to fast. I had to learn fasting all the time because I don't know when I'll be asked to, you know, to contact somebody, go near somebody, talk, pray for somebody. I don't know. So I came to love fasting, to do it all the time. I only ate you know, one meal a day for many, many, many years. Are you here? It was because I was preparing my inner life to be ready to help wherever God calls me. He says here, yeah, and God calls him to come down to their level. The government lodging houses provided two meals a day for tramps. And the Lord told his house to live in the same way. Amina, you ain't saying Amina. Amen. You better help me out. You better help me out. <laughs> the Lord wanted him to live the same way on two meals of bread and cheese and soup. The midday, you see that, you see this, because of this, the Lord prepared him ahead by that fasting that he had to, you know, skip lunch. Okay, that's, that's for its use. On two meals a day, he will eat in the morning, don't eat lunch, and then go to work, and then come back, and then eat at 5.30, a bowl of soup, and then off to the, you know, to the mission field to go and preach and teach the tramps. <coughs> ah, he says here, the midday fast had been a preparation for this. The difficulty was natural in his own home, where his mother was most unwilling to let him live like that. Oh, yeah, mama is bringing her own self in there. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mama, mama will interrupt everything if you allow mama. <laughs> you, he will come you and save you. <laughs> mama will come and save you now, brother, and you might not be able to go to heaven if she saves you from what God wants you to go through. <laughs> Ooh, mama was most unwilling to let him live like that while doing the heavy work of a, of a miner. He's doing some, some tough job in, in, in the pit as a miner. 
However, he insisted, Rhys House insisted, backing his arguments by reference to the four young men in Babylon, who after their days of abstinence looked fairer and fatter than the rest. Daniel chapter 1. Okay? Daniel, Shadrach, and uh, uh, what? Uh, Azariah, Meshach, and, and a big Negro. Those four. Okay? They say, hey, hey, listen, Mr. Enoch, you, you, you trash. Because we don't, we, we ain't going to eat the, what, what, the Babylonian stuff. We don't like that. We are, we are Jews. We don't like that. We serve God. So, yes, try us. Give us some salad. Yeah, give us some leaves. That's all right. All I want to use is just leaves. <laughs> and try us for how many weeks? He said, he said try them for about a, a week or ten days. Okay? And then, and then you decide. Between us and the others who eat the king's dish. So that is why he's quoting to his mom. Because he said, Mama, listen, you, you forgot about Daniel, Shadrach, you know, uh, uh, what, Azariah and uh, Meshach and all them guys who refused to eat, but just only, only one salad. Oh. He says here, his mother had to consent. Although the story goes that with motherly ingenuity, you see, Mama always, always will invent something. She put all the nourishment she could into that evening soup. <laughs> oh, he made sure that she, he, he got everything he wanted because he eats in the morning one, a, a cup of tea. That's it. He gone. Gone all the way to evening, a bowl of soup. I lived that way for many, many years. <laughs> Uh, I, I take a cup of tea, that's it, some cheese and one, one, one toast, that's it. I finish. I go all the way back in the, in the evening and I, I, I find me a bowl of soup. I wanted to live it, to experience it. You see, at one time I said, Lord, I want to train myself in so many all kinds of ways because I don't know where you need me. I don't know what, like, 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 uh, uh, what's wrong? Schmidt Wogelschwein. He's been fasting all right, on his own, fasting, seeking God and all that. And the day came when he's, he's about to break his fast. Early in the morning, the Lord said, no, 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 hold on. Don't break your fast now. Don't break it. I have an assignment for you. Ooh, I want you to go and wake up Lazarus. <laughs> you, you remember the story in, in the, uh, what's his name? Oh, what's, the, what's his book's name? Ever Increasing Faith. All right, Lazarus, some stinking, some mean, lean bones. So I want you to go and, and uh, raise him up. So don't, don't eat. You see that? Ah, Lord, Lord, I just finished and I'm hungry. I'm going to, hey, 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 don't go there. Don't go there with me. I say, go and raise up Lazarus. Don't break fast. Be ready for, for God to assign you any time, any hour, and ask you don't eat. That's why if you don't have control, discipline on your appetite, you will falter. Yeah. Your stomach will be growl. <laughs> oh. <laughs> your stomach will be growl and you'll be, you'll be grumbling. Brother, no grumble with God. You want to serve him, serve him right. Okay, so, so he says here, <coughs> ah, yes, God. He had one meal at 6.30 in the morning. And the other at 5.30 in the evening. After his day's work in the pit. And before he started for the village. It was a barrel at first. Both physically and mentally. Notice what he's going through. What he needs to conquer. Physical agony and mental agony. He has to, uh, he has to you know, conquer that. Because you are staying in, in your house. Your whole family is there. They are, they are eating their barbecue dinners and you, you, you're just taking soup. Look at the impact on him. Okay? So he has to, he has to, brother, go through it. He says here, he, uh, it was a barrel at first, both physically and mentally, eating at the same table with others and having different food. There was great suspicion about where this new new doctrine <laughs> where this new thing would end he said and what my object was in doing it neither they nor myself had ever seen a man called called to fasten 
and they thought the experiment would soon come to an end. But in less than a fortnight, the Lord had so changed my appetite. I broke through. In two weeks, the Lord had changed my appetite. Oh, my goodness. Ah, but in less than a fortnight, the Lord has so changed my appetite that I prefer those two meals a day to the four I used to have. That craving for food was taken out of me. You hear it? Some of you, this is your problem. Craving, craving for unnecessary food when you ain't hungry. This uh, is working here. It's working. The word is working. Is the word is the word working there too? Are you laughing too? Is it getting to you? Craving for food. When you don't need to eat, you eat. When you ain't hungry, you eat. Now, how can you serve God with couple, 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 couple all the time? <laughs> Ooh, when you can't stay away from the kitchen. You can't stay away from the kitchen. Let your kitchen stay clean for some time, okay? <laughs> it's working here. It's working here. I'm not hearing you all. Oh, in the Holy Ghost. Leave your kitchen alone. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I tell you. He says here, uh, the craving uh, for food was taken out of me. And, though, and, and through the whole period, my health was better than anyone else. Amen. I never had a, a shade of headache. And my body was fit as, as it could be. He lived like that for two and a half years you talk about discipline yeah. this is discipline and this is victory yeah. victory over his appetite mm -hmm. amina no amina what are you doing amina. come along with me amina amina all right all right all right you hear that? He lived like this for two and a half years. I tell you, when I saw this, when I was reading, no, in the beginning of my reading house, I said, Lord, can I do this? <laughs> oh, can I, can I try this? That's how, that's how I took okay, my cup of tea in the morning and then my soup in the evening. And I did that for a long time. Because I wanted to feel how my body will adjust if God put me through. So that's, you see, that's how when I went to the nations, I don't eat until in the evening. Because you are, I was, you all think I'm wild now? I was wild them, them days. I was wild them days, brother. <laughs> Ask Pastor Q. When he heard, he said, Look, I never heard anybody like <laughs> I never met a man who was so wild like you. And the word was power. <laughs> because, brother, I was concerned about the impact I will have for my God. Yes, amen. Is, is Pastor Key somewhere? Pastor Key, are you hiding? <laughs> Oh, yes, God. Let me read for you. He says here, he lived like that for two and a half years. Supplying the needs of the tramps soon absorb all the earnings of the little group at the mission. And they were forced to give it up. Huh? Were they forced to give it up? No. Oh, no. They went a step higher. Oh, <laughs> oh, money ain't coming. Money will come. I say that money the problem. Money will come. But if you ain't saying man, you ain't saying man, because they're gonna lift 
lift their faith higher. Lift their commitment higher until God came through. They didn't give up. Listen to what happened. Supplying the needs of the Trump soon absorbed all the earnings of the little group of the mission. And they were forced on still farther, still farther into a life of faith. Now, now they touch a life of faith. Believing God to supply. Believing God to bring the finances. Trusting God for it. Living by faith. We sang it the other day. In Jesus' above. Trusting, confide. Then it is great love. From our sin. It is shattering us. I live by faith. And I feel no Allah. Oh, living by faith in Jesus above. I'm trusting, confiding in His great love. From all I'm saying, shattering now. I'm living by faith. And I fear no Allah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I will live by faith. Mm -hmm. And I will not fear no Allah. Amen. So they went higher. They kicked another gear. Mm -hmm. All right? So that they will, they, they will still trust God. The parable, I like the next verse. Mm -hmm. The parable of the friend at midnight. You know that friend? Mm -hmm. That came to midnight. He said, hey, friend. Uh, can you give him bread? Because I got a visitor, I ain't got no bread for him. This became the award. This word here became the award. And he's gonna tell you the friend only went one time to his friend. He didn't go no more. But they went every night. Ooh, they went to God every night. Oh boy, y'all don't make it. Come along with me, bro. <laughs> Come along with me in the spirit. Amen. <laughs> the, parable, the parable of the friend at midnight was very real to them in those days. The only difference being that the, the midnight guy only went once to disturb his friend. And they were forced to go almost every night to go and bang on heaven's door. Amen. They proved said Mr. House, what a heart. You see, I said, I, I told you that we, we, we're going to sing, uh, uh, what, uh, my faith has found, what, a resting place? All right, here it is. He says here, they proved, said Mr. House, what the Reverend Evan Hopkins used to teach of the three positions regarding faith. Whoa! Now listen to it. Three positions, struggling Clinging and resting. Woo! 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 woo. <laughs> My faith has found a resting place. Not in device, no creed. Oh, no, 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 in no creed. <laughs> ah, Amina. All right, listen to this. So struggling, clinging, and resting. The three steps in faith. The illustration Mr. Hopkins used was of a shipwreck. Now pay attention to it because that's your faith. Of a shipwreck when people are thrown into the sea. In the struggling position, now listen to it. When you are in the sea, you are struggling. In the struggling position, they are in the water. Fighting against the waves. The waves of life are, are towering over their boat. And are in need of help themselves, right? Yes. In the struggling position, you need help. Then in the clinging position, they are holding on to the boat. They are clinging to the boat now. They manage to get, go, go near the boat and hold on to the boat. All right? But they are holding on. Their hands are not free. You see that? They are holding on, clinging to the boat. They are quite safe themselves but cannot help anyone. 
Anyone else? Because both their hands are occupied. They are holding on to the boat. If you, if you let go of the boat, you sink. So you can't help nobody else. You can help yourself. Right? Okay, so he said here. In the resting position, they are sitting in the boat with both hands free to help others. <laughs> the place of deliverance was always when they got to the resting faith. Amen. When your faith ain't resting calm, knowing that God will come through for you, you'll be tormented and you'll be blown left and right by the waves. Amen. So the resting position of faith is what Christ brings it into. Those who have, uh, we who have believed have entered into his resting place. Can you help me with a little water, my bride? <clears throat> you see, so notice the three positions of faith. Struggling, okay? <clears throat> and then, and then, and then leaning against or, or what? Struggling and uh, what is it? Clinging. Thank you. All right. Okay. Now let's go <clears throat> and see how how it worked with them because you're gonna need it. In fact, it, it is applicable even in I mean in, in praying for certain things from the Lord. Okay. You are restless. You are this. You don't have no certainty or anything. You cry and cry and cry, and all of a sudden now 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 read I think Psalm five. Psalm 5 or Psalm, Psalm 30. One of them Psalms you know, by David. He, he, he was saying, how long, how long, how long, how long, Lord, how long? The officer said, he said, hey, oh you sinners, come on, the Lord has heard my prayer. You see that? The Lord has heard my prayer now, so now I know I'm going to be all right. In the beginning, how long? How long, Lord, will you, will, will you forget me forever? You ain't sure. How long will my enemies just, just run about, just laughing at the How long, Lord? What's going on? What's going on? What's going on? All of a sudden, something happens to me. Hold on. Hey, cinnamon. How long are you going to talk? About? Come on, the Lord heard me. The Lord is going to deliver me. Faith. He comes to the resting place. He knows God is coming. Okay, here. He says here. Ah. The place of deliverance was always when they got to the resting faith. When we first started to help them, notice how it applied to them. Amen. These three positions. Okay? Uh, what is that? Uh, struggling, clanging, and resting. Amen. How it applied to them and how it is going to apply to you. So when we first started to help them, Re said, we were afraid too many will come in the same fortnight, the same two weeks. Too many will come. We were scared. Now how about if some more come? How are you going to do? See, they were scared. You don't know. They ain't, they ain't got no solid faith now. So now they were scared. All right? And that we could not provide for them. And while there was fear, there was inward struggle. Ah, you didn't say amen. Anytime you are tormented by fear, you are struggling on the inside. Your faith ain't solid. You are shaking. Okay, you are shaking. You don't know what's going to happen. Can I stand? Can, will the Lord come to my rescue? No, you, you, are, you are just struggling, period. You are, you are scared. Will God come to your rescue? Will he forsake you? So he said, and while there was fear, there was inward struggle. We soon found out that we could not provide. Whoa, I like that. Oh, yes, God, you got to come to this place. When you know, hey, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. It's not us doing it. We cannot do it. We cannot, well, we cannot you know, you know, cope with, with the numbers if they all come. Mm -hmm. But so we better recognize, Lord, this one is, is beyond us. Mm -hmm. Unless you do it, we can't. That's right, you have to come to the place where you realize you cannot do it. How many times I've told the Lord, I know, I know, I can do that. It's not mine. I ain't, I ain't going to worry about nothing because I know you well. I know you will make a way for me. 
So I'm going to trust you and just wait patiently. Now listen to what they said. Ah, we soon found out that we could not provide. And that was just the place to which the Lord wanted us to come. Brethren, you're struggling. You're struggling because you think you have to do it. And you are not able to do it, so you're scared. All right? Your faith is shaken. Brother, all of a sudden, wow, I don't think I can do it. Lord, this one, unless you come in. He said, but that's what I wanted you to come to. I'm waiting for you all to come and say, Lord, we cannot do it. Then I can come in. But you are behaving like you, you are macho. <laughs> macho believers always fall down flat on their faces. Recognize that you come to a place you know you cannot. God has to step in and lift you up. God has to fulfill the promise by himself. You know what, 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 what uh, Solomon said? He said, listen, you by your own mouth, you promised my father David that you would establish his kingdom forever. Now I have risen in the place of my father David. And by your own hands, your own hands, you have fulfilled the word. You promised my father David. And now I'm the king. Oh, yes, God. He couldn't make himself king. The Lord made him king. You see how Adonijah, you know, you know step in you know, to steal the kingdom? Amen. And Nathan, you know, you know, did his job. And Bathsheba did their job. And David was awakened to it. He said, hey, no, hold on. Call, call, call the, what, the prophet. What's his name? Nathan. No, no, the Nathan. And then, yeah, 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 Zadok. The, the, the Zadok, while he has the anointing. So take him and take my son. Let him ride on my mule. <laughs> let me ride on my mule and let him parade through the nation. And let them blow the trumpet that God saved the king. King Solomon is king. All right? The Lord makes it happen. And men cannot, the Lord will. So he wants you to come to the place of weakness and recognize that you are not able to do it. The Lord will always give you assignment that is always beyond you. But you being macho, you struggle with it that you can do it. Yeah, 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 we can do it. Yeah, we can do it. Yeah, yeah, we can do it. And you tackle it that you fall flat on your face. Ah, Lord, ah, I guess I, I need help. Oh, yeah, I'm, I've been waiting for you to tell me that you, you need help. So he said that was where the Lord wanted us to come. Then we had to find out that God could if we would trust him. You see that? He said, he said here, yeah. the Holy Ghost allowed us to, you know, to be failures once or twice. So we left off struggling and trying to do it ourselves. You hear that? When you, you fall down and try to do it, you, you fail a couple of times in the whole on. This is the only God can do. Let me humble myself and open my heart to him and wait upon him. Amen. Ah. We clung to God's promises. That is in the clinging stage now. Because we knew we couldn't do it. Hold on to God. Hold on to the unchanging arm of God. Hold on on the everlasting arm. Lean on the everlasting arm. Yes, God, lean. Lean and don't struggle no more. See, uh, you say here, we clung to God's promises, pleading with him to come to our rescue. And he never failed us. After many had hard experiences, we found the resting place. Hallelujah. We came to the place where our faith now is solidly resting in Christ. That's it. We don't struggle no more. We don't cling nothing. We just rest. In. The work belongs to the Lord. And he will do it for his name's sake. Oh, you all go to church. He says here, yeah. ah, after many hard experiences, we found the resting place. We became like waiters. I love this. There is a passage, uh, my, uh, I want my scribe to look for me, you know, in a, in a sometime. It's something like this in the, in the God calling of God at even time. What he's saying here. He says yeah. here, we, we, we became like waiters serving in a restaurant. 
it wasn't our business whether 10, 15, or 20 would come. No, we knew the manager. Are you the master? The manager will not fail to provide what was needed. You hear that? That's your attitude. God sent you. God gave you assignment. And you cannot do it? Yes, you cannot do it. So what do we do? I rest on the master. I wait on the manager. He knows. So God knows how many of the tramps will be coming each night. Ooh. <laughs> God knows how many will show up each night. And they could trust God to supply. Whether a thousand or five hundred or fifteen, it don't matter to them no more. Do you hear that? Do you see how they conquered? Struggling to clinging and arresting. Ah, they are satisfied. God can do it. All right, so he says here, ah, we became like waiters serving in a restaurant. It wasn't our business whether 10, 15, or 20 would come. We knew the manager would not fail to provide what was needed. We told the Lord to send as many as he liked. Ain't that something? Bring them on. Bring them trumps. As many as you want. We have faith to believe you. He that sent us will also do it. Oh, brother. Oh, brother. I tell you, brethren, I ain't lying to you. This thing is beautiful. This life, this intercessor life, walking with Jesus, resting in him, Says here, we paid the grocer's bill every two weeks when we got together and emptied our pockets. On one occasion, when we knew the bill was heavy, one sick brother who was not earning anything said, I am ashamed that I have only, only four and a half pence. Four, or no, no, let's say, uh, no, uh, no, four, four what? Uh, uh, what was the pennies over here? How do they call it? Pennies. Oh, four, four pennies in the U.S. The pen is penny. Uh, what? How do you call it? All right, all right. I say four pennies. Yeah. Okay. All right. That's how. That's how much you have. Four pennies. Shall I put that in? The answer was yes. It will be like the widow's might. Mm -hmm. We entered the store. We were given the bill and found that the four and a half pennies made up the money needed to the penny. Hallelujah. And so what did they learn from it? Listen to that. Everything is for learning. What did they learn? We learned that that night not to despise the little gifts. Not to despise the little gifts. Okay? When people give little gifts, don't despise it. It may not meet anything, you know, you think, but God knows exactly why he sent it. Mm -hmm. Right? So he said here, don't despise the little gifts. Over and over again, we found the money coming to the needed penny. And that gave us more joy than if we had 10 pounds over. <laughs> oh, that's a life of faith. Right there, how much you need that came exactly. Nothing more, nothing less. So now, now listen, in three months, many of these men were helped. Each received a new suit of clothes, was found work, and put in good lodgings. Some received eternal life. One evening, 16 of them were in the meeting. <laughs> well dressed and singing from their hearts, it is well with my soul. <laughs> Woo! One brother sitting next to, to Mr. House whispered, Yes, and with their bodies too. <laughs> it is well with their soul and with their bodies too. But only those who have done such work can know its real cost. The real cost, you don't understand. It costs a lot to live this kind of life. Listen, there were occasions when the same Trump came back after he had been given a new suit of clothes. He came back for, not for, for some more. <laughs> he had sold it. <laughs> he came for, 
for, for a new sheet of clothes to go and sell. <laughs> he sold the he, he sold the old one, so he came for more, some more, and came for another. There, there was an elderly woman who had fallen very low through drink and would wander in the streets seeing things. They found her a lodging, but when she fell ill with, with pneumonia, when he fell ill with pneumonia, neither her. Uh, well, neither her son nor her daughter would nurse her. Mr. House, Mr. House was with her one whole night. Ah, you miss a good place to say amen. You all don't see? You all don't see this? He was there. He was there. Pneumonia or no pneumonia, he was there. Ah, he said here, the house was with her one whole night. On his return home in the morning, even his mother rebuked him for being, for being up all night looking after that old sinner. Look at the mother. But I thank God for his house. You know what he said? Reese had to remind her that the father received us all back with nothing but our filthy rags. <laughs> he, he spoke to the mother. Oh, yes, God. That's true. We all were filthy. We're not rags. We were. And then you, you, you call her in the whole sinner that I shouldn't waste time on her. Did God not waste time on you, mama? Amen. Ah. In another instance, we found a house for a family of tramps. And got the husband work. When another family came for help, he asked the first ones to share their house with them. As it was large enough. What? Take trams into a home? <laughs> what? That was the answer he received. Risa uh, received from the former trams. <laughs> Without a word. He turned away and sought another place for them. After many months in, his, in this school of faith, said Rizal, the Holy Ghost put such love in our hearts towards these people that we would rather be without ourselves than allow them to be in want. You hear that? The love of God is so powerful in their being that they will rather go without themselves. Themselves, they will rather go without food than let the the, the what the tramps suffer hunger, suffer anything. Well, what is that? That's divine love. Amen. Amen. Ah, it says here, we became fathers to them. There were many disappointments, but some were allowed to disappoint us. Because it was part of our training. I want to open something up to you. In God calling. See if I can find it. In God calling. I'm going to see if I can find it. Ah. Why, why is that? Was it in March or was it in May? Okay. I found it over here. Yes, God. No, no. It's in, it's in, it's in July. Let me find it. Yeah, I want to I wanna read something to you. Ha, 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 ha. Woo, okay, all right. July, Ju July 28, God calling. Listen to this. Because you, you will need it. He said, mistakes. Mistakes. That's the heading. July 28, God calling. I am your shield. No buffets of the world can harm you. Feel that between you and all scorn and indignity is a strong shield. Practice feeling this until nothing has the power to spoil the inward peace. Then indeed a marvelous victory shall be won. Then here the, uh, the, the situation. You wonder sometimes why you are permitted to make mistakes in your choice. You see that? Why you wonder uh, well, uh, sometimes why you are permitted to make mistakes in your choice when you sought so truly to do my will in the matter? 
Amen. You sought me that I wanted to do my will, but you made mistakes. Why did I like to make mistakes? To that I say it was no mistake. Oh no! You think you made a mistake? It was no mistake. All your lessons cannot be learned without difficulty. And this was needed to teach you a lesson. Not to him who walks on with no obstacles in his way, but to him that overcome it is the promise given. You hear that? Ooh. <laughs> to whom that overcome it. Right? That's the, that's the promise. So you will make mistakes. Don't beat up on yourself when you make mistakes. Okay? Especially when you have prayed about it, cried to God to guide you, and then something happened. This, this, something. I, I, was, I, was, I was so disappointed, you know, with myself. So I, I was telling my bride, I'm going to pay a bill. Okay? I'm going to pay a bill. And the bill is so much. Okay? I've gone to the bank. Okay, and then put money in the account so that I can transfer it from the internet, you know, into the account, you know, and then, and then pay the bill. I know how much I should pay, right? And I go, I, I go and pay hundred dollars more. That's not wrong. Lord, why didn't you show me? <laughs> I'm going to pay two two fifty. I pay three fifty. Lord, what what? I never done that before. I don't know, but then some, some quiet peace came to my soul. I said, all right, all right. Maybe you know what you're doing. Maybe it's, it's for my own good that this has happened. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I'm going to learn the lesson out of it. Uh, it's no mistake. God don't make mistake when you're walking with him. God don't make no mistake. He will allow you to make certain things so you can learn. All right? So he says here, Ah, let's go. Now we're going to earn it. We're going to go, go to the end. Okay. Ah, after many months in this school of faith, said Rishaus, the Holy Ghost put such love in our hearts towards these people that we would rather be without ourselves. The intercessor is always, you know, ready to be without it. To be without the necessities that he needs for his own life. So that those he's praying for will have it. Yeah. I didn't hear no amen. It's a sacrificial work. Yeah. Ministry is sacrifice. You, you see, you got to understand. Ministry is, 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 is not showmanship. Ministry, anybody who goes into the ministry for showmanship, Lord, he don't know God. He don't know him. Brother, it's a sacrificial no calling. Amen. You are called and you answer the call. Nobody forced you to answer it. You answered it because that's what you wanted to do. So there are certain situations that will affect you. You might even wish, I wish I hadn't come. How many times did Rizal say, I wish I hadn't done that? I wish I hadn't submitted to that. Now, but then he came through. He said, okay, that's how it is. We go on with the Lord. You are always aware of the glory of God that is at stake in your attitude. You are always aware of the needs of those you are praying for. More than your own. Because you ah, you don't understand me. Your own God takes care of. Oh, amen. God takes amen. care of you. Or unless you understand. All right? You take care of the people he sent to you. All right? And let God take care of you. Amen. Come on. That's how it works. Amen. I go to God. I go to God. All right? To take care of me. Whilst I take care of, of, of his sheep. Whilst I am given all I have, all right, to make you know, it better for some people. My own, where do I get it from? I get it from the Lord. But he said, he said, he saved us. Do you, do, you, do you read that word? He saved others. Himself, he could not save. Did they not tell the Savior that? He saved others. And himself, he could not save. Why? Because he came to save others and himself, God saves. Yes, Lord. Amen. 
You got to understand that God will save you. But you save the others. Amen. Your assignment is go and labor for the others to come to him. Yeah. When you run into, into difficulties, God saves you. Alright, so don't seek to save yourself when you are serving God. Right. Let God save you. You be concerned about what you are doing for God. Do what God has told you to do. And leave the rest in his hands. God will save you. If he don't save you, he knows why. And later on, he will let you know why. Ah. He saved himself. He, uh, he saved others. Himself, he could not save. Because himself, Amen. himself, it is God who saves. Did God save Christ? Did he deliver him? Mm. Yeah, he delivered him, but it was after death. He brought him up. Hallelujah. He brought him up in resurrection power, in resurrection glory. Yes, Hallelujah. And now they saw that, wow, now we are in trouble. This guy we killed, now he alive. Boy, oh boy, we are in trouble now. Yeah, God save him. But not when you wanted him to be saved. See, people wanted Christ to be saved so that he don't go die. Peter, hey, no, 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 you ain't going to die. Peter, come on, come on, get, get out. Get out, you don't understand the things of God. Okay, I came to die. That's right. Come on. So I'm going to die. No one can stop me. <laughs> Ooh, but I came to die so that my father will be glorified. And my father will take care of me. How I'm going to come out? Ooh, you, you read uh, Romans chapter 6. I like that. He said uh, Jesus was raised up by the glory of the Father. The power that, that came out into the tomb is called the glory of the Father. <laughs> he was, the glory power came, they call it the Kratos power. You know Kratos? The Lord, the Lord confirmed that to us, said the power that came to the tomb is called Kratos in Greek. Okay? It is not, it's, it's not dunamis. Oh no! It is Kratos. <laughs> that is the power that God deployed to raise up Christ from the dead. And then set him up above all names. Seated at the hands, the right hand side of God the Father. Above every name that can be named. So that the name of Jesus, every knee, he ain't got no choice. Every knee must bow. Every tongue must confess both of things on earth, in heaven, on earth, and under the earth. Because glory belongs to Christ. He was raised up in glory, raised up in majestic power, in a display of eternal power that has never been seen before. All right, we are about done. So let's go on. He says here. The Holy Ghost put such love in our hearts toward these people that we would rather be without ourselves than allow them to be in want. We became fathers to them. There was many disappointment, but some were allowed to disappoint us because it was part of, part of our training. Some did not appreciate the kindness, but have, have often grieved the Holy Ghost and trampled underfoot the blood of the covenant. We had plenty of facts with which to silence the critics, who were many. Reese's final test with the tramps was in his own home. Ah, his own home. Them tramps are coming there too. <laughs> them, tra them tramps are not staying on the outside. They're coming to where you stay. You'll be asked to bring them home. You'll be asked, <laughs> You'll be asked to bring them home and to love them. Ah, yes, God. Rich, is there any, anything in the way of cast off clothing he had already been accustomed to take over to the village? Everything that was, 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 was old clothes, Rich carried them all from home to, to the village for the people to wear. Okay, being accustomed to take over to the village. Indeed, his mother made a joke of the fact that whereas they used to have a box room full of worn garments, after a while, she couldn't find a bit of cloth with which to patch anything. But the test became more severe when the trams began to come to the house. They found out where his house lived. They went there. 
<laughs> the Lord had told Rich House. The Lord told Rich that he was not to take a different place for himself at home from that which was given to the tramps. <laughs> so if the tramps came and they were asked to sit down on the floor, Rich would go sit by them. <laughs> you can't sit anywhere. Or rather the tramps were you not know, other than the place the tramps were asked to sit. Okay, now I knew that to turn them out will be to turn the savior out. They come to my home, right? My father is there, my mother is there, my brother said, and I, I'm gonna turn the what, what the, the, the tramps away. Oh no. If I turn them away, it is Jesus I've turned away. Whoa. And I could see a test coming. It might mean I will have to make a stand and walk out. Walk away and leave the home. Then one night it came to a head. Some members of the family said they would leave the home if things went on like that. Every time they came home from work, these tramps were there who always sat in their father's chair. <laughs> The Trump don't want no other play about the father's chair. What are you going to talk about? <laughs> oh, the father's chair. And did not get up when he entered. Ooh, ooh. I could see his house just blushing, brother. He was, it's all red in his face. Also, they said that they would not be responsible if anything happened to their mother, the family, when they were all out. It was one of the worst tests in my life, said Reese, seeing the possibility of my father's home being broken up. But my father was given great wisdom in the answer he made. He said to the others, if I stop the tramps, are you willing for me to stop your friends coming? Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> Listen, he said, we all bring our friends home. Mm -hmm. And if Reese House, Reese has sunk so low <laughs> as to have only trumps for his friends. <laughs> 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 <Ooh>. <laughs> they must be free to come home too. <laughs> the father was, was wise. The father was wise indeed. Okay? If Reese has fallen so low that only Trumps are his friends, they must be free to come too. The victory was won. And the strange part was that after that, not another Trump came to the house. You hear that? That was a test allowed by the Lord to prove that the Trump can come home and feel comfortable. And you will be there and the tramps are there. They come to visit you. <laughs> Your friends, the tramps have come home. <laughs> to visit you, you say what? Oh, hey, hey, don't come here. Don't come. My father is here. Don't come. Hey, hey go, 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 go. Don't let you. <laughs> Woo! Yes, God. I tell you, what a joy it is to follow the Lord. Yeah, I, know, I know it is joy for your soul. Uh, but I know he ain't no joy for you because you all don't like it. <laughs> you don't like it at all because you are mean I didn't come. You didn't come. <laughs> Brethren, oh, Jesus. listen, it's gonna get more and more intense. Alright? It's gonna get more intense. Now tomorrow we'll, we'll get into the abiding, the principles of abiding. What you are going to do when you abide in the van. We we touched it some 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 months ago. But we're going to you know, bring it in the midst of studying, studying that thing. What do you have to do when you are abiding? When you are abiding with the Lord? When you are praying? When you are waiting upon the Lord? Well, what do you do? What are you supposed to do? All right? So we'll look at that next, uh, uh, tomorrow by the mercy of God. So now we come to the close of tonight. But I, I pray that the Lord has spoken to you. In a, in a vivid way, yes. in a real way, yes. the demands. You see, this is Christianity. Mm -hmm. It's not what men have reduced it to be. That's There's right. church services. That's abominable. That's, that's, that's horrible. Mm -hmm. 
Yes, we are supposed to meet, okay? But the meeting with, with the Lord is not the end of it. After we meet with the Lord, then we walk with the Lord daily. Yes, come on, daily, so that the Holy Ghost can prepare vessels of honor for God to use. Yes, Amen. So it's not, it's not service. The Lord has spoken to us about, listen, it's not about church services. I didn't come to come and establish church services. I came to indwell you so you walk with me. Thank you, Lord. So you walk with me. So I can manifest my life in you and through you. I need vessels I can dwell in. I don't need vessels that just go to church and that's all they do for me. No, your life must count for the progress of the work in the kingdom. You must be of, of, of value to God. And your value is not just attending church services and singing some, you know, some praise. Can you be used by God? To reach out to the suffering. Would your Holy Ghost be able to use you. To reach out to the dying. To get involved with those who need help. It is a practical Christianity that Jesus broke. Practical. He went to the house of Lazarus. He went to the house of, 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 of Zacchaeus. He went everywhere he was led to go. Will you, will you go everywhere you are allowed to go? Some, something that we are, we are allowed to experience. I tell you, if I told you, ah, Jesus. Okay, but I ain't going to say, say it. But that was part of it. That was part of our training. That was, the, that was the intercession we were doing. Praying for, you know, a wonderful, you know, young woman. You know, uh, middle age. But brother, I tell you, he ain't fun. But we were, we were made to, you know, we were made, we were made to not live through it. Come on, bro. Come on. I went to one nation, okay, in Africa. <laughs> and as I was going, okay, to go and preach, okay, the place, the places that the church was, was inside, okay, inside, you know, the, the, the city. And there was all kinds of filth around brother stinking sewer lines okay and the church was right there brother it was stinking but boy i i was in the office who goes let's listen hold on before you say anything i want you to know that i live here with them that <laughs> 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 i live here with them i live in this stench with them they are my children that's where they live. So I live in the stench. My Holy Ghost is here. <laughs> I know you ain't going to live there. <laughs> listen, when we came to, listen, when, when we came to, yeah, oh yeah, we are in Michigan, right? Okay. Well, <laughs> I forgot we are in Michigan. When, when I moved here, all right, in the, in the early, in the 1995, Okay, I started coming here in about three, uh, three, of, uh, uh, three or four years in you know, earlier with Brother Dwayne. So he's the only guy who's been following me or everywhere I go. This guy, he peppered me. He, he brought me down. He brought me everywhere. <laughs> oh, by now you're having a bishop, brother. <laughs> you should have been a bishop you know, of, of some big church, brother. Because we go back all the way over, over how many years now? I tell you. All right, and when I came, when we moved to you know to the hotel where where Pastor Phil came to, you know the hotel at the what at the uh, yeah yeah telegraph yeah yeah, yeah telegraph in Michigan Avenue, there was there was a, a, a hotel there, that's where you know we came rented two two hotel rooms with a with a hall in between, right the case all oh, everybody was there, okay and we have a meeting there. I've not ever had doing came up. That's why Pastor Fish came first. Okay? And then we were, we were praying. I didn't know where I was going. <laughs> Whether I'll go back to, to New Jersey or not, I didn't know. I'm just, I, I just came. And then we, we were holding a meeting. That's it. And then we, we, we started to feel that, you know, one day, you know, we just went around and found, so found this place, this little house. Well, ah. But they, they say the Holy Ghost. When we step, the Holy Ghost is there. I said, no, that's not the place. 
I said, no, 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 that's not the place. Oh, no, no, no. Let's go. We went to Birmingham. We went to all the Canton area. They were looking for some nice place. Because we coming from a six-bedroom apartment, the house, and you're going to come and you know, get stuck in, the, in this little house? Oh, no, oh, no. I kicked against it everywhere I went. <laughs> Brother, when everywhere we went, we were troubled. Everywhere we went, we were troubled. But when we came to this little house, with the rundown you know, environment, we had peace. I said, oh, Lord. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I said, oh, Lord. <laughs> Is that where we coming to, oh, Lord? <laughs> ah, you going to Little Saigon? We go to, what, 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 what's that, what, what's the place about there? Crack City? <laughs> I tell you, brother. <laughs> <laughs> my brother, we accepted and moved in. One guy came, he said, Dr. Kwa, where do you live? I said, I live on uh, Harrison. He said, oh, Lord. <laughs> he said, that's where you, why didn't you tell me? I should have told you, don't go there. <laughs> I said, brother, it's too late, I'm there. <laughs> Oh, little Saigon, brother. Pow, 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 pow. That was my, my whole environment. Every night, pow, 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 pow. Brother, how do you live there? But we lived. We lived. God said, I brought you here to pray. Thank you, Lord. I brought you here to pray. Amen. And then one day, I had no church, but no nothing. We were praying in the house, that little house. Amen. And then one day, Pastor Heister came. Yeah, he came to my house. He knocked. He said, come, he said, come in, Pastor. He said, uh, uh, you are the new new man, man in town. And uh, I came to say hi and welcome you. But God told me that you are a man of prayer. And so I shall give you a key to my church. Wow. Ain't that something? He said, you can go to the church anytime. Here is the key. Ain't that something? Amen. So we came to pray. And we prayed indeed. Wow. And God moved indeed. Amen. We travel. Pastor Fish will testify. Brother Dwayne will testify. Okay, Brother Ed will testify. Amen. We brought the school children from downtown Detroit and came to Insta and revived them. <laughs> Brother, we've, we've seen some stuff. All right? Insta was shaken by God. You know how, how they had to clean. Why is that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gangs were in the park. Was not, what, what, what? Marijuana? They were, they were smoking like crazy. All right? And then that, that uh, 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 house, the, 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 what? that house that was pulled down by the police or this and that, 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 or oh, that's. No, no, no. Where, the, where there was a prostitution, there was a prostitution house. Oh, it was a theater too? Okay. We pray, we pray. Uh, yeah, yeah, we, yeah, we pray, we, we pray them to what? To be destroyed. That's right. Prayed a lot of, a lot of houses around the fire fell, in, you know, were caught on fire and instant they, they, they were doing crack. Yeah. All right, the fire fell in. <laughs> Brother, but we were fasting and crying out to God. Okay, so this thing can be done if you want to. The Lord will bless you and enable you to do it, you know, and impact. Run down cities. Oh my goodness. Downtrodden areas. I live there. So, brother, you can allow God to use you wherever He wants. And he, he listen, you'll be blessed. You have joy. We had joy in Insta. Brother. <laughs> we had joy in Insta. I don't care what you say. <laughs> ah, brother. May the Lord God bless you. Yeah. And may, may the Lord God open this word to you. Mm -hmm. So that you, you will know that this is what Christianity is all about. Mm -hmm. reaching, reaching the downtrodden. Mm -hmm. Reaching those who have no hope. Yes. The poor. The gospel. Mm -hmm. We're mingling with them. And so you can touch them. Mm -hmm. So you can witness to them. Brother, I went one time in uh, the, uh, the, you know there was a uh, Carlisle and uh, uh, Harrison. Mm -hmm. There was a store there. Right. Yeah, a store there, not knowing that it was it was some um, drug area. 
me, I'm, I'm ready, have gone and stood by the by that side, and I have I have a trash in my hand. I didn't know the police were, were watching me. <laughs> and then the other day, then some some officer pulled up and said, Hey sir, what are you doing? I said, oh, I'm a new pastor in town. So oh, you new pastor in town? I said, let me tell you something. Or right, go, go go stand that corner. That's better for you. But this place, we are watching it all the time. <laughs> so, so if we come to you know, catch all of them, we'll take you around because we don't know who you are. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you, that is the place where you have, you, you, you have your, your landlord is, is, the, is the bailiff of the, of, of the town. And he wants you, uh, uh, I'm the bailiff. I'm, your, I'm the owner of the house. All right? I said, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, we'll pray. Oh, no, God, send us here, and God going to pray. I said, oh, yeah, I heard that before. <laughs> he said, I want you to know I have kicked out pastors from their houses. God, they, were, they weren't paying their rent. Wow, the bailiff meets me there with this story. <laughs> he said, Reverend, all right, and, uh, if you don't pay, uh, I'm coming for you. <laughs> Brother, I was sad, man. <laughs> oh, I told, I tried to show some some stuff. Say, yo, the, the Lord. Say, yeah, I heard the Lord before. I heard that I, I've sent out people who said the Lord, and they couldn't pay their rent. Brother, I cried. Say, God, you sent us here. This man is mean. <laughs> Deliver us from this mean belly, oh Lord. This mean landlord. <laughs> Oh, brother, I tell you, I will never change the experiences I've had, all right? I've, I've seen some, but I love it, and I'll continue to serve the Lord wherever he wants me to go. So I just pray for you that you will have the zeal, the enthusiasm to serve the Lord. Okay, so that the Lord will be honored and glorified wherever you go. He will work with you. All right, don't resist him. Open your heart to him. Let the Lord glorify his name. Okay, the Lord is loving. Wherever you go, he will be there. He will be there with you in the field. Oh, the Lord will be there within the stinking place. He will be there with you. He will comfort you. All right, and he will give you the resources to reach out to the people. So may the Lord God help each one of you. I hope by the Holy Spirit, I have stirred your hearts. And that your hearts are now burning. Didn't our hearts burn? I hope your hearts have been burning with the Holy Ghost fire. May the Lord God use your life, use you to, to, you know, to advance the interest of the kingdom in this nation. Father God, I thank you for tonight. I thank you for what you have said. I asked you to speak. I said, Father God, my heart is open to you. Say whatever you want to say. You know, I'll give you opportunity to say whatever you want to. You preach the word. How? Let it come out the way you want. I ain't going to control you. I ain't going to. I just, I give you the freedom. Father, use me as you see fit. And I thank you for what has come out tonight. I thank you for the way you open up the words to us. I thank you for the presence of the Holy Ghost. The anointing in the word of the Lord. Thank you, O oh Father, you glorified your word. Yes, God, in the hearing of your people. So now, Lord, use them to advance the interests of your kingdom. And I thank you that, Lord, it shall be so. Your name will be glorified. And we thank you for what you've done tonight in our lives. Lord, bless us and, uh, and bring us back tomorrow to continue to climb this mountain, to climb it, Father. And conquer it, Father. And then surrender our lives to you. With deep understanding of the call of God in our lives. Father, I thank you that many shall be called. As a result of this resource, Lord, Lord, steady. Many will surrender their lives. Even around their own homes. Around their own families. Lord, in their own neighborhood. Lord, they will take it upon themselves to cry out to God. For their neighborhood to be reached by God. Father, it shall be so. So I thank you for the call of God that will come to many. So Father, as we prepare to go home, watch over us. Watch over your people. And we thank you for tonight. In Jesus' name.
And everybody said, Amen. 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 I give the Lord a clap offering. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Pastor 